Hey guys, how's it going? May the peace of God be with you all. God is so good, guys. There is only one who is worthy to receive all glory, honor, and worship. And his name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Guys, uh, most of us know that we are living in a very hard times. It's not yet the great tribulation, but it's called the birth pains or the beginning of sorrows. Jesus spoke about it in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming? And he told them it's the abomination of desolation. But before the abomination of desolation, he spoke about tribulation, about uh, persecution. And at the beginning of the chapter, he spoke about the birth pains. And I believe we are living during these times because everything mentioned there, it applies to our lives. So Jesus said in Matthew 24, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And will deceive many so Jesus is saying take heed no one deceives you pay attention be careful that no one deceives you because many will try to deceive you many will come in my name saying I am the Christ he's not speaking yet about the Antichrist many will come saying I am the Christ false prophets false false teachers they are all around us once we have the Holy Spirit, we can test the spirits and know who is speaking from the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So you will hear about wars and rumors of wars, and this is what's happening in our days. But Jesus is saying, See that you are not troubled. It means don't panic. This is what it means. Don't panic, guys, when you see, when you hear about wars around you, about troubles, about uh, problems. Don't panic. The end is not yet. Why we should not panic? Because we have faith in Jesus that he is with us and he will protect us and he will empower us. We need to stay connected to him in prayer. So Jesus said, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. It's not like uh, uh, something that no one knew about it before. Jesus is already has already prophesied about all of this. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we cannot say, oh, where are you, God? Look, all of these uh, famines, uh, wars, pestilences, pandemics. Where are you, God? No, God already told us about them. We need to trust him. He has a plan. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be a worldwide war. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. So famines, because of wars, people will suffer. Pestilences pandemics, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Or in another translation, it says, all these are the birth pains. So it's just the beginning, it's the birth pains. You know, when, when a woman has wants to uh, bir like give a child, she has birth pains. But once the child is delivered, or once we have the child, the woman, forget about these pains she forgets about that and she she has joy now when she sees her child and it's the same now people are suffering believers are suffering there, there, there are wars persecution but once we meet jesus we will forget about all of this pain and our joy will be so glorious when we will meet the lord hallelujah and this should encourage us to endure and persevere and I want to share with you guys uh, yesterday I was praying God give me a word and I believe that the Lord answered me and he said to me I would like to share it with you the Lord said even though you are going through the birth pains I am with you 
Soon you will see me and your sorrow will turn into joy. Hallelujah. I will read it again. Even though you are going through the birth pains, I am with you. Soon you will see me. Soon you will see the Lord, guys. And your sorrow will turn into joy. Our sorrow will turn into joy. As I said, once we see, once the woman uh, sees her child, she forgets about all the pain, about all the birth pains. And once we meet Jesus Christ, our sorrow will turn into joy. Hallelujah. But who are those that their sorrow will turn into joy? This is a good question. Is everyone who is suffering in, in this world, his sorrow will turn into joy? No, actually. Actually, this is not nothing compared to hell. In hell, there is so much more pain and it's eternal. No escape, no hope if someone ends up in hell. And I, I felt the Lord is, is pushing me to share this verse from Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So not everyone who says Lord, Lord claims to believe in Jesus Christ, claims to believe in the Lord, will enter the kingdom and his sorrow will turn into joy. But those who do the will of the Father, it doesn't mean that salvation is by works. It's of course by grace and by the cross. But this salvation changes us and, and we should repent of sin and now live in, in, in holiness according what we what this grace is teaching us. Not to live, uh, not fulf to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but to walk in the spirit, in life, in love. To obey the commandments of the Lord, holiness and love, walking in the fear of God. So many will say to me in that day, Jesus is speaking, many will say to me in the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Wow, they claim to be prophesying in the name of the Lord. Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name, miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It's terrifying. We should tremble when we hear these words and examine ourselves are we doing his will are we walking according to his will i will declare to them listen carefully what did jesus say i never knew you he doesn't know them depart from me you who practice lawlessness they practiced sin it's okay to uh, like christians they can stumble and fall sometimes in sin but then immediately they they are broken and they repent, they ask forgiveness, and they rise again and walk in the Spirit. But if someone is practicing sin, he is living in sin, and he's, uh, he's, not, like, he, he's not having uh, problems, he's okay with his sin, this guy, he doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. You cannot have a relationship with Jesus and walk in sin. You will hate sin and you will love righteousness. So Jesus, so how to be known by Jesus is to do the will of the Father. In John 10, in the Gospel of John 10, verses 27 to 30, Jesus also said, spoke about those whom he knows. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me and they follow me. So my sheep hear my voice. We hear the voice of Jesus and we follow him. And he knows us. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Hallelujah. Are you struggling with the assurance of salvation? Listen to these words. He gives us eternal life and we shall never perish. Once you have a relationship with Jesus, you repent and you believe in him. He gives you eternal life and you will never perish. This is his promise. Trust his promises. This is faith, is to trust the, the word of God. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. No one can snatch you out of the hand of Jesus Christ once you walk by faith in the Spirit. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying that he and the Father are one. There is such a beautiful unity. We serve one God, guys. The Father and the Son. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God, of course, who lives in us. So no one can snatch that us. Can snatch us out of the hand of Jesus Christ once we are in his hands by faith. Once we repent. So I hope these guys are the I hope guys these words are a warning and an encouragement to those who are walking by faith. Stay close to Jesus and fear not. The Lord is coming soon. God bless you all. Share this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Pray for this ministry, guys. The Lord is speaking to my heart to serve Him more and more, to dedicate my life for Him, to go on the in the streets and to preach the gospel, to win souls. Guys, the purpose of proclaiming the truth is to win souls, to save souls, to snatch them out of the fire. So we should have this love. It's not about just I proclaim the truth, I did my duty, I did my job, and I don't care about the people. No, we want to win souls to the kingdom of God and to save them from the kingdom of darkness. So let us pray for the people, guys. Pray for me. And I want to pray for you and encourage you. Father God, I thank you for everyone who is listening to me right now. Strengthen them, Lord God. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Teach them how to hear your voice and how to, to follow you, Lord God, so that they may know that they have eternal life and they will never perish. Hallelujah. Strengthen them during these hard times, the birth pains. But let us remember that once we see you and meet you, Lord God, that our sorrow will turn into joy. I praise you, Lord God. Maranatha, Lord. Lord Jesus, come and wait for you. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.